about 400 million years ago. And if one goes to the opposite pole of the Earth, to Antarctica, it's possible there to find coal seams, not deposited under tropical conditions, but certainly under very much warmer conditions than Antarctica has at the present time. Now, you know from your knowledge of plate tectonics how those seeming anomalies can be explained. The continents have moved. They've moved as passengers on the rafts, which are the plates of the surface shell of the Earth. But the idea that the continents had moved was one which was very difficult for scientists to accept. And the difficulties that they had were often associated with the lack of enough evidence to support the theory. It isn't any good just having one piece of evidence to support a theory. You must have evidence from many quarters, and it must all be convincing. For example, the equivalent of earthquakes on the moon, that we call moonquakes, travel with a velocity through the moon of about just over 1.2 to 1.7, nearly two kilometers per second through that rock. A piece of cheddar cheese would transmit those moonquakes at just the same velocity, about one and a half kilometers per second. So from that observation, that single observation, it would be possible to conclude that the moon was made of cheddar cheese. And of course, we know it isn't. It's ludicrous. But it is supported by that one piece of scientific evidence. So when you look at the following hour, and particularly at the first half hour, which is the Planet of Man program, Beyond a Doubt Revolution, remember that you're looking with hindsight and that the scientists of that time were simply exercising the skepticism which keeps science progressing. There's just been a real revolution in the earth sciences. It follows a traditional pattern that has occurred in other sciences. In this case, the, the great concept has been that the continents can move about and are not fixed. And the experience in the other sciences has been that when such a change in ideas occurs, immediately after that, there's a great opportunity for advance. Many lesser things become clear. And so we feel that there will be a very great advance in the earth sciences during the next few decades. The minuet is a stately dance for nobility. Encumbered by their extravagant costumes, the couple moves in a stilted fashion. Elegance gives way to awkwardness until the dancers are entirely out of step with the times. Revolutions are violent upheavals that rupture ties with tradition. Members of the establishment invariably muster to counteract such canons of change, but are eventually destroyed when the force of popular opinion sides with the revolutionaries. Revolutionaries bring about a major shift in the way man perceives himself. New slogans emerge, old dogmas tumble, the king is dead. Long live the revolution. Yet, who is to check the power of the citizen who believes in long laws and short lives? The epic of man is a chronicle of revolutionaries who stood by to provide new solutions. The history of science is also the drama of revolutions, passionately fought by radicals who defied authority to expand knowledge, who turned their world upside down. The creative scientist deals with problems of cosmic proportions.
conversion of the mind of man. But man does not readily grasp new notions. He fixes on old concepts, basic images and simple forms. The heavenly bodies hint of the divine form, circularity. Even the window to the soul is so shaped. The circle. It has no beginning, no end. It embraces perfection. Its regularity is comforting. In the fifth century before Christ, Plato propounded the notion of perfect form and bound scientific inquiry in a straitjacket for 2,000 years. Those lovely patterns in the heavens are decorations in the visible world, but they fall short of those which are true. The true forms, I tell you, can be apprehended by reason and thought, but not by sight. Pursue problems in astronomy as we do in geometry, and leave the starry heavens alone. By reasoning before the fact, the individual arrives at truth. The world is corrupt. Change is an illusion. All true motion must be uniform and circular. 500 years later, Ptolemy, looking at the night sky, is spellbound more by Plato than by what he himself observes. We believe that the object which the astronomer must strive to achieve is this, to demonstrate that all the phenomena in the sky are produced by uniform and circular motions. Yet he had observed that the motion of some of the planets, unlike the stars, was zigzag. At times, Mars stands still in the sky, reverses direction, and then pursues its former course. But the arbitrary law of uniform motion and perfect circles must be preserved. Ptolemy begins his model of the universe with a series of Earth-centered planetary circles. On the circumference of the large circles, he places smaller rotating circles. And behold, the divine Ferris wheel. A combination of perfect circles that will keep man entranced for another 1,500 years. By the end of the 15th century, the Ptolemaic model began to creak, but not with the rust of observable fact. Copernicus was even more enchanted with uniform circular motion than Ptolemy. The Ptolemaic system, while saving circular motion, did not quite maintain uniform speed. Having become aware of the defects, I often considered whether there could perhaps be found a more reasonable arrangement of circles in which everything would move uniformly about its proper center as the rule of absolute motion requires. In the 16th century, a revolutionary was born who before he dismantled the models of Ptolemy and Copernicus would state, Oh, for a supply of tears that I may weep over the pathetic diligence of one who, relying on Ptolemy, wasted his valuable time and ingenuity in the construction of spirals and loops in order to represent that which exists only in the mind. The times are ripe for Johann Kepler. Precise data on planetary motion is being collected, and the Copernican model does not accurately predict the position of the planets. After a false start in trying to unlock the secret of the orbit of Mars, Kepler discovers that his model is inexact by a small time margin. If I had believed that one could ignore these minutes, I would have patched up my hypotheses. Following six years of struggle with mathematical computations, he discovers that the orbit of Mars is elliptic. The key to planetary motion was a cosmic egg, not a perfect circle. Because Kepler chose to abandon conventional thought and stuck with stubborn facts, he broke a 2,000-year trance.